Hello everybody, it's SD Madhaven here today, and I just hit my remote and I went all out of the way to move my tank around. Well, as you guys can see from the thumbnail, the title of the video, we are going over two tank destroyers today. The Bison T-103 and the Scorpion. The Scorpion G is also included, but I just like the regular base version because I just recently got it, hooked it up, I'm enjoying it, it's fun. So, let's go ahead and jump right into this replay, and as this is starting up, I will go over what these videos are for. These are for tier 8 tank destroyers that make you lots and lots of nasty amounts of credits. They're worth the grind, they're worth the purchase, they're definitely worth having inside your garage to begin with. Now, the Bison, the reason why I chose the Bison as one of the tanks to get your hands on to make silver inside of is because of update 6.0. Um, during last season, season two, during the Hot Wheels event, the Bison got a buff. They increased the reload by one second, well, decreased the reload by one second, which means you now reload faster. On top of that, they took the, th what was it, 390 alpha damage that the tank used to have and increased its base damage by 50, jumping it up to a 440, which means this big behemoth of a tank now reloads even faster and hits even harder. Along with the new perk system that's going on, the Bison is extremely deadly inside the matchmaking if you can get it hidden or if you get in the right positions. The Bison overall, great performer so far on update 6.0. And the Scorpion, that's self-explanatory. I don't need to go over the tank. Solid builds on that tank. Um, it is lacking in view range because of the update, but Let's jump right into this gameplay here. Now, trees have been updated. They look a lot better than what they used to. Honestly, they do. And along with that, they now apply a massive bonus to camouflage when there are multiple of them in front of you. A total of three trees in front of you are like three large bushes. In returns, if you have muffled, muffled shot on your crew, as I'm speaking language today, you are able to take shots behind three lines of trees with one of the biggest guns in the game in the FB4005 and not be detected from up to 200 meters away. So, knock down some trees, get behind them, make a nest. Let's make it a thing, guys. Hashtag make a nest. There we go. Now, the Bison, sure, it's got this reload buff. It's got all sorts of buffs. There are a couple flaws to the tank. You are gigantic. You know, the second you're spotted, it's really hard to get this thing covered. You don't exactly have the greatest reverse speed. At, I believe it's 11 kilometers an hour. You are slow on the retreat. However, the 40 top speed that this thing has allows you to get in spots pretty quick. And its power to weight excels it up to that 40 really quick. Even up hills, you'll be maintaining about 30 to 32. Overall, great tank. Super performer. Second shot into the game. And loading for the third shot. Just look at the reload here. We're not even running a gun rammer. So 443. So on this tank, um, during this replay, I did not have situational awareness on my Bison. I just recently swapped over my crew to get situational awareness. But we did have coded optics. And we were breaking about 424 meters of view range. Which, in return, gives this tank a lot to do for spotting for its own targets. With situational awareness, you're looking at 443.08. Which, yeah, you're definitely going to be spotting your own targets. And if you're using the trees, like I said, you should be able to stay covered, stay concealed, and spot for yourself up to 350 meters. Now, just because the trees are there doesn't mean I should be pulling out to try and take shots of light tanks down low. Sure, I had the extra concealment, but I got to stay behind them to keep that concealment. Now, there's been a couple of things I've been noticing inside matchmaking that I've been watching people do. Uh, for instance, I witnessed a Udez earlier today firing while sitting inside of a bush and then getting spotted out and listening to him inside game chat complaining about the fact that he was spotted whenever he was in a bush. Now, just a quick fix, quick correction. Staying inside the bush will not provide the camouflage bonuses. When you are behind the bush, you are able to fire. When you go inside the bush, half effectiveness of that bush. Okay? Now, as soon as you pull up, you're doing that to spot your target. Now, back up behind it. You know, keep it to where your barrel's not poking through at all, not covered. You know, if your barrel's exposed at all, it's the flash that's going to be giving you away. So, now fun facts with Haven here. 
it's always nice to know exactly how the mechanics of the game work. And uh, I, I've taken it upon myself to make it my job to make sure you guys know how all of it works. That way we can get cues and matchmaking to be perfect. And there, I believe that was the third kill of this game. So far, it's 6-6. Six to six. It is a very balanced fight. And we have been enjoying our time sitting inside this spot. With the trees being down, it does give us a lot of ability to go over. Pop out, take shots without being detected. It's extremely nice. Especially with the rate of fire that the bison offers. Oh, God. Man, just get this tank in the right spot and go nuts. Seriously. If you guys got the bison... Get a washcloth, get some of the dust off it, go nuts. Now, we were spotted by the Companzo 105 coming up from the left side right there. He has enough view range to catch us out in the open. But we pop out, and as you can see, we could take a shot through these uh, trees here without being detected. Because we off uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. We also have a couple of bushes up in front of us, which help cover, them, cover the muzzle flash. There we go. Can we stop speaking slang -witch today? And there we go, possibly the fourth kill of this match. But in return, we did take a shot from the low black. We have a T28 up on our right side, and he's taking blind shots now because he sees the trees down. So he knows to take a blind shot because someone's possibly camping behind them. We have a heavy down low, which is the Dreadnought. Hopefully our tank destroyer down there can handle him. Now, right here, I'm thinking I, I want to go around the left side. I want to go around the right side. Honestly, I'm struggling to make up my mind because we have four tank destroyers left. I have view range to be able to spot these guys out without a problem. And I feel like if I leave, we're not going to have any view range down here. Along with that, there's a T-28 up to our right that has been unspotted for quite some time. And there we go. We spotted him out. Pulling up. Taking an RB pop shot, which is an auto lock pop shot. And because of the reverse speed of the bison, we take a hit. 11. Oh, man. 11. It's so slow. But still. Even though it's slow, I still love my bison. This thing is just so much fun. And there we go. Even though this thing's a big son of a you know, big girl. She can still make it up the side of that hill without much problem. Now, this match does go for quite some time. You know, we get we get the last tank down. You know, spoiler alert, this is a win. But you see, there's still two minutes left in this replay. So what I'm going to do is, let's go ahead, jump up just a little bit. T-28 gets taken down. Along with that, I decided to try and take the far left side to come up and just try to flank the low black because of my hit points. I don't want to expose myself up against them, but it is what it is. Now, up next, so right here, we made 61,000 silver. We didn't do a whole lot that match. You know, this wasn't no 4,000 damage game. This wasn't no 3,000 damage game. It was a 27-20. So, it's not too bad. Up next, we have the Scorpion G. Now, oh man, look at that. I did it again. Beforehand, I planned this out saying, hey, you know what? We need to fix this and not make mistakes. But we're up on Mountain Pass inside the Scorpion G. <laughs> Mountain Pass is one of those maps that has been around for a very, very long time. It has gone through multiple reworks just to try and help balance out the game. A long time ago, we used to be able to get up on FG5 and six up in the top section there on top of the mountain it was so much fun back in the day to be able to get up a Jagdpanzer e100 e100 up there and take shots going left because you were just hauled down and all you had to do is back up to take a shot now right off the bat on mountain pass all the time i have the same position that i like to go to right away depending on the tank that i'm in if i'm in a super heavy i love to go bridge occasionally i like to take the right side path but 95% of the time, you can always catch me going to the same spot, trying to get shots across the way. Now, knowing the concealment that the Scorpion offers, I know that I can take the farthest 
area, come to a complete stop and aim across the way without being detected. Because of that, you know, I'm beyond the 445 uh, maximum spot cap. Right here, 471, looking at the HMH 58. He's not going to be able to spot me out unless he pulls forward and overexposes himself to try to spot me. Now, there is a medium all the way out there, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Just trying to drive a little bit further down to see if we can get shots out there. And we take a blind fire, no hits. So far, we've had one direct hit this match. Now, immediately I stop and I think to myself, I need to fall back. Now, if you guys are watching the map, you'll see why. We only have one medium down low, which is a Chiri, which is down to 218 hit points. There's two heavies and a medium coming up that side as well. And so far, it's a very evened out match with 12 to 12. But if they are allowed to come up and flank us, it's going to cause a lot of problems. So far, we have a Udez and a medium coming up this way. So an Indian Panzer right there. Both artilleries in the back. They're relocating because they see what just happened to the right side. Now, as you guys know, I like trees. So... First things first, let's set up our little nest here in the back before these guys decide to come and rush up. And watching the left side, we got two light tanks pulling up. Along that, we only have one tank destroyer left inside the center. That's not a good sign. Center looks like it's been put through absolute hell. Getting completely slammed, not enough armor down the center. Um, I do like it whenever we do have a couple of heavily armored tanks taking the center path. Because right there, it's a haul down fight going down that center. You know, you're always best to launch high explosives or premium rounds whenever you take the center path covering the bridge here on Mountain Pass. Uh, depending on your medium, you can do it too. M48 Patton, the LPC, could be great performers over in the middle. But they would be better off trying to do flanks going around the far left or even cutting down the little center dip. Now, coming up, we see a defender. Um... Can't exactly get the gun depression with the 7 degrees that the uh, Scorpion offers. But, there we go. 220 and there's a kill. Right side so far, we have a SU-130 coming up. Left side is falling apart pretty quick. Because the center was taken over and the tank destroyer fell back from the center. They were able to push across the bridge. And now our medium and two tank destroyers on the far left are in a pincer. They are stuck. Now, with map awareness, map awareness is one of the biggest keys to this game. You always want to pay attention to what's going on around you. You know, it's like if you see one flank is falling apart, you want to move around and you want to make sure that you're taking over the next flank to try and prevent a pincer maneuver or to get drawn out into the open. That's something that I really heavily hope you guys start to do. Now, taking this position inside the Scorpion, we have a 128 caliber weapon. So, 128 millimeter, 490 alpha. So, we're able to do a lot of damage to anyone that comes over. But, we do have to pick our targets and we have to time them out. If we're looking at somebody that's got full health and we take a shot, then they're going to know exactly where we are. And since they have full health, they can start being aggressive, they can take shots and alert everyone else on their team that we are here. And since a lot of people like to play inside parties and group chats rather than sing inside game chat, you can use this heavily to your advantage. So, kicking back, you know, I felt like pitching a tent, getting my camping gear set up, and pulling out the Scorpion just to enjoy my chance to take some shots across the way behind some bushes. Now, our Indian Panzer decided to run away and head down the side trying to see if he can get some flanks instead he ran into another medium all the way down there which we do not know what the medium is along with that a tank destroyer he would have been better off trying to stay up top rather than pushing down the way he did just to give artillery vision and sight now our tank destroyers would have been better off going up on top of the hill another one coming down towards me and then as everyone's trying to get up the hill to get the kills to get the damage me and another tank destroyer could have been down low doing absolute massive amounts of damage. 
But so far, this has been a pretty slow-paced game because we only have 1,180 damage with our sure third shot of the game being into an ISM. Now, the ISM, I don't know what he was thinking. He's probably sitting there like, I have no clue where that shot came from. The Scorpion G probably ran away. But what we're going to be doing here is we're also running with the advanced reloader equipment on top of this tank as well. So we're able to swap our shells to whatever we see fit. And right here, you know, I see the rear end of a stone cold pushing up. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what, let's get a high explosive into your engine. So do we get it? We do 603 and some engine damage to put the icing on top. Last artillery is taken down, and just to guarantee that we kill him, we put another high explosive into him, just to make sure that he's out of the game, that way he can't rush down to where we were. Next target for me, I sat back a little bit too long. I should have been taking shots as many as I could into the ISM to get him out of the game, and then to be able to focus on the uh, Chieftain T95 that was over there as well. But I wanted to see how effective the camo was here. So we put a 466 into the ISM and now we're stuck in the open getting absolutely pounded by everything around us. Oh, oh we're, we're out. But you know what? That was still a fun run, you know. None of these replays were ace tankers. None of these replays were the absolute best that you could see out of these tanks. It's like, these are just some of my favorites to pull out and use. And even on a loss, we, I still made 50,000 silver inside my Scorpion. And without a premium account, I would have made 20,000. So, what can I say about these two tanks, the Bison T-103 and the Scorpion? They're worth it. They're definitely worth it. They're completely opposite of one another. The Bison, it's big, it's bulky, it's got a fast reload, 440 alpha. Scorpion G is concealment, movement speed, and just overall heavy-duty support. So, if you guys liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. If there's conversation potential, I will try my best to get out and have a conversation. But keep in mind, I like to keep them a little bit brief. But other than that, you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Don't have too much fun. See you out in the battlefield.